Hey everyone. Um, welcome to our workshop today around finding your focus metric. Um, we're just gonna wait a couple of minutes before we get started to allow some people to uh, filter in. Um, but it'd be great if um, you know anyone wants to share where they're, where they're dialing in from today and you know what you're looking to get out of the workshop. Feel free to comment in the chat. <laughs> So I'm from the uh, I'm from London, so I'm gonna put mine in the chat. <laughs> and hey from Israel. So yeah, we'll just give it a couple more minutes. Italy, we've got so far. Someone from London. Barcelona, Germany, Belgrade, Jordan, Bristol, uh, Serbia, Nigeria. Nice, global Great. presence. Saudi, Egypt, Israel. Nice. Stockholm. Great. It's great to see so many of you from different places. Um, yeah, so someone's asked if the session is going to be recorded. So yeah, we, we are recording the session um, and we'll go through a few housekeeping items um, now actually. So it's probably, should we kick off, Edan? Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Great, so uh, welcome to our workshop today around finding your focus metric. Um, Hopefully you'll kind of leave this session knowing a bit more about what a focus metric is and kind of how to define one. Um, we just wanted to quickly run through a couple of uh, housekeeping items as well. So Dan, if you could go to the next slide. Yeah. Great, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. So, there you go. Oh, that's great, thank you. So um, firstly, we want to keep the session really interactive. So if you have questions, please ask your questions in the Q&A or in the chat. Um, yeah, we'd love to, to answer your questions on the go. Um, also, if you want to participate at all at any, at any time, please feel free to raise your hand. We'd love to work through some examples and workshop some ideas. So yeah, please feel free to raise your hand and participate. The webinar is being recorded, so you'll get um, a copy of that within the next 24 hours. And if you're having any technical difficulties as well with sound, you know, you can dial in through your phone as well. So for the uh, workshop today, um, you know, we've got quite a lot of ground to cover over the next 45 minutes, but the goal of the session, like I said before, is for you to walk away feeling a bit more comfortable about a focus metric and, you know, how to create one for your company if you don't already have one or maybe adapting your existing one. Um, we do have exercises, so like I said before, please get involved and please participate, we would love that. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So to quickly introduce myself, my name is Harriet and I work as a customer success manager here at Mixpanel. So working with a lot of different businesses in our um, EMEA region um, around focus metrics and um, KPIs and strategy. And I'm now gonna pass over to Idan as well. Thank you, Harriet. So again, with this, uh, a short intro uh, for myself, um, been an entrepreneur for 10 years, uh, basically transitioned there to join Viber. Uh, one of the largest messaging apps out there. Uh, if you're from uh, uh, Europe or East Asia, you probably know us very well. Um, and I was basically looking at you know, how could I leverage uh, behavior analytics and market dynamics to generate growth? And this is where we were able to highlight some opportunities. And this is what I do also with companies today. Um, and basically this is what I'd love to do with you. So if you can uh, be engaged in this uh, work session, I, we would love to go ahead and help you uh, find, you know, um, or clearly define your goals and how to measure and reach them. So, Let's dive in, but first let's talk about you. Um, 
this is uh, based on what you shared with us and thanks for sharing. It kind of reflects the stages where, you, where you're at. Um, so both Harriet and I have experience uh, throughout this whole uh, um, um, you know, matrix of, of where, uh, you know, or roadmap of where the company is at at this point. So if it's from a startup entrepreneur perspective of building MVPs and uh, validating hypotheses and you know, scaling companies, and in this case, um, also big companies. Um, just before we jump into uh, to the session, I want to go through some last thing that you guys also shared with us. This is uh, a set of metrics uh, that you guys share that you might um, um, be monitoring right now. But right while some of the metrics could be better than the other, uh, just you know, keep to this as like a starting point. And remember that it's a work in progress and hopefully also by the end of the session, you'd be able to iterate on that and, and feel a lot more uh, confident in where you're at um, going forward. So just to share with you, like from my observation, I've been working right with startups and also bigger companies. Now, you know, too often I find like industry leaders um, um, and new company, companies, sorry, come up with a list of things that their competition is doing, right? And they have all the resources and and you know all the priority. And I'm talking, I'm not talking about uh, small companies, right? I'm talking about the market leaders. Uh, and I feel that what they lack is actually that focus, okay? That clarity of what is a success scenario. How do they define their win? How do they um, measure what they believe? Uh, would define how strong they are in the market and eventually how could they leverage that for growth. And this is a part where I believe that startups could actually win because it's not about the resources, right? They have infinite resources. They could spend like millions of dollars on user acquisition, but then, you know, not necessarily that would lead to growth. But if you're able to clearly focus and align everyone around that uh, and iterate fast, that's where you guys could actually, you know, um, flip that disadvantage to advantage. Um, and so um, I see, uh, Harriet, do you want to add maybe anything on this before we dive in into the workshop itself? No, there's just a couple of comments around. Um, I don't know if your mic's maybe scratching against something or. Mm. Okay, let's, how about, is it now? Is it okay? Yeah, that's better. You hear me okay? Good. Can everyone right. confirm that's better? <laughs> um, thanks for the feedback. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, okay. I'll try also to move less. <laughs> um, so yeah, so great. So let's just dive right in and please, uh, you know, continue to share feedback. So, uh, all right. So for example, we saw the metrics. So there's, you probably heard this before vanity versus focus metrics. So vanity metric, I'm just going to recap here. Um, in 2008, when I launched my first company, uh, I tried to raise funding and people were telling me you need to get 100,000 downloads to, for us to really fund you. And you know, today that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Who cares about downloads? You know, most investors or most people you talk to would ask you how people are using your product. And so for example, for a food delivery app, it's not, not necessarily uh, um, you know, how many orders placed even, so not downloads, not even food orders placed, but also adding a time interval to it. So for example, how would you expect your users to use your product? In this case, a good user would you know, probably place three orders in seven days. Okay, now it, there is no right or wrong to this. It's basically something you need to think about and be honest with yourself and your product and see what makes sense. Um, and again, there, there's more examples into it. So. Uh, banking or music, right? Played song, open app. So played three songs, completed three or more transactions in a month or in the last 10 days. So try to think of, uh, of your product. Uh, you know, I know you, you put in those metrics before, but try to, you know, um, rethink them now and try to think what time interval you could go ahead and add that in. Feel free to share in the chat. And, you know, if you, uh, we find that you need any help, we'll, we'll just pick a couple examples and dive in. Yeah, I think it's a good point to kind of challenge yourselves, like, don't just look at apps, so app opened, or, you know, 
like the examples we saw there, you know, really kind of challenge yourself and your your product. Like, what is an actual um, active user? Yeah. So, it doesn't matter who you are or what's your role in the company. Um, everyone could set a focus metric. One thing that I could share from my experience is uh, I was doing product. And so it kind of made sense for me as product to drive this because usually product leads by inspiring others and leads uh, kind of like the strategy of the product. So it made sense, but like marketing can come up with this, uh, sales and leadership, everyone could do this. Um, it might be that there would be a little tweak in the metric uh, that has more, it is more associated to that, you know, uh, department. Uh, so product would probably do user engagement versus sales would probably do revenue or number of uh, uh, newly active acquired uh, customers, things like that. So, you know, basically you could feel free to just pitch in your own. Um, we actually had a question um, from someone in the chat. Um, so I think it's probably relevant to something we're going to go into in a bit more detail, but they're asking why would adding a time interval be more valuable? How do you make sure they aren't arbitrarily chosen just to have one? Okay. Um, I'll give an example. So at Viber, okay, um, let's say uh, one metric could be monthly active users. Okay, so the time interval is monthly, right? Monthly active users. But is that right for a messaging product? Okay, so think about that. You know, what is the usage patterns that you see? Like, it, it also matters. Like, what game are you playing? And I think we'll we'll talk about that soon. But um, think about that. Um, what it eventually turned out to be is not that monthly active users, but um, we first of all thought of what is an active user if we're going into a metric that is active user, so what defines an active user? What actions does the user need to take in order for him to receive value from your product, to reach a value moment? So- and I think it's that habit moment as well, yep. isn't it? Like how frequently do you want people coming in your product? Because uh, yep. if, I, if I log into, let's say I'm a Viber user, you want someone to be using Viber daily, if, if not hourly, Whereas someone using Mixpanel, for example, they probably use it weekly. So like, what's the natural use frequency there? Exactly. And this is exactly the slide that was going to show next. So I jumped into that, but I'm, I'm going to still continue with the example. So, so think about, oh. you know, what is that natural frequency? Is there a question? We've actually there? had someone raise their hand. So um, Great. yeah, we're just going to uh, unmute you so that you can, yeah, you can now speak. So yeah, please feel free to, to pitch in. I think it's Olvia. Thank you so much. Uh, it is a really good uh, explanation. It, I think that this is a um, problem. There is voice problem on me, so I want to solve it. Therefore, I bring it the hands. But now I'm solving. It's OK. Thank you. You can uh, continue. Oh, OK. No problem. Okay. Great. So. Um... So then, right, the natural frequency, which makes sense for the user. And what is that, um, what is that event? Okay, what's a customer value? So messaging, send a message, for example. Is it starting a call? Is it, um, you know, whatever makes sense to your business. And then think about the interval. Uh, when we looked into the interval, we wanted to choose a focus metric that um, eventually resembles um, you know, our power users. So we would be able to understand that if we are able to grow that metric, that would directly mean that we're strengthening our, our presence in, you know, a specific location in a specific target segment. So imagine it, it was uh, sending a message, the active user definition. And then I wanted to understand what is the usage interval. So one of the things that you could do is bench using a competitor. So in Israel, uh, WhatsApp is, uh, is very popular and Viber is less popular. So then I thought about myself, okay? It's, it's, it could be very, very simple. Okay, you could start off simple and you could iterate. So I thought about myself being a WhatsApp customer. Is there a day where I do not send a message? And the 
you know, the, the answer with that was pretty straightforward. And it was like, no, there isn't a day. And of course, I don't send one message, I send several messages, but that was the baseline. And so being able to understand that and understanding the market share that we have in Israel, because for messaging market share is very crucial because it tells you how many contacts you're going to have to speak with when you open the app. So that's the natural frequency at the natural kind of like environment of a messaging app. So we took that focus metric to uh, that, uh, sorry, active user definition to focus metric. That means I want to know how many users that are active every day of the week. Okay. So that means sending a message on the first day, on the second, on the third, until on the seventh day. So seven out of seven days a week. And that was a focus metric. Now, if you look at, uh, at a metric this way, you're going to have smaller numbers than you would if you look at a monthly active user. But then this is the part where, you know, you want to be super focused on what matters to be able to really drive growth. Because if you drive the monthly active users, you won't necessarily understand where growth is coming from. If you look at like 20 active user definitions, then as from a product perspective, what would you need to iterate on in order to increase? Like what metric has what impact or what action has what impact? You, you just have to keep, keep like stay honest with yourself and, and keep iterating on this, keep challenging yourself with this. And again, you need to understand what game are you playing? Okay, it's an attention game, transaction game, or a productivity game. Okay, so for, for messaging, it was productivity because um, communicating with your contacts or with your family and friends, that's in uh, a product, that's sending a message. So by being better at what we do, we, we help people be more productive. Attention game would be time spent watching ads or time spent in a session. And uh, transaction is, again, like e-commerce or any type of marketplace where you have a buyer and a seller. And then you can track the number of purchases. We've actually had a question come through as well, as well around um, what techniques would you recommend to find focus metrics apart from general brainstorming? Um, and I think some of the exercises we're going to go into in a minute might help with this. Yeah, I will hold with that question, but maybe you could uh, remember who asked that, or we could ask that they circle back when we do the exercise, and maybe we can bring up, bring her up, and uh, do it together. Um, yeah. So it was an anonymous person, but please feel free to, you know, raise your hand at the appropriate moment, and we can dig into an example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is just another example of uh, different industries and uh, and value moments. So, right, media, so it's played video and media, and then you can see the natural frequency. It makes sense that it's daily, same as it was for messaging, that it's daily. Um, okay, so finance. Right, so e-commerce would be, again, probably monthly, because you go into the website or the app to order an item, but then the next time you go through that process could be in a week, two weeks, three weeks from now. Okay, so here's a Dropbox example. Okay, so for right for, for a Dropbox user, you could upload a file, sync a folder, or, or you know offer some file updates, share a file, collaborate on a file, and download to access a file. So what would be the most important one? And maybe you guys could also share in the chat what you think would be a most important one. Maybe we could talk about it. Someone's asking if we could go back to the previous slide, actually, oh, just so can quickly see that. Um, yep. We also had a question too around, um, is a focus metric a way to segment your user base to pay attention to recurrent ones to understand the value you are giving to enhance and drive growth? Yeah, I, I think in somewhat it is. It's really focusing on who you think you should focus on. So if you're wrong, you'll know that what you're doing, your efforts are not uh, growing that target segment. And maybe you can go ahead and look at uh, your value proposition and understand how appealing that is, if any. So I think it is aligned. And one of the ways, going back to that, uh, the, you know, on that topic, one of the ways that we've kind of uh, filtered through our active user definition is we went through our value propositions. 
Okay, so we try to understand what are we saying that we are good at or that we are providing our users in the app stores and marketing. And then um, you put all that on the board and then you just eliminate. You try to understand what's, what, first of all, what is your com com you know, competitive edge? What is the value that you're providing? And then you go through and filter until you realize what is your core. Once you understand that, you basically probably understand that, but there's different ways of measuring that. So when I'm saying eliminate is you eliminate those user actions, those events. So for example, we had start a message, start a call, um, consume content, and you have communities and you have bots and you have various things. Uh, you, you could imagine there was like a start a conversation. So it's not like one message, it's a message and a reply. Um, there were different things that were suggested and we just started eliminating until we decided that send message or start a call, that's the main value proposition. And we should put more effort in understanding how we can improve that value. So by measuring that, we were able to improve our, on our value proposition. That's really interesting, actually. I was um, reading something yesterday about having a check metric alongside your focus metric as well. Um, which can keep the focus metric in check. So you know exactly what are the things that are contributing to that focus metric, um, which I thought was quite interesting. Yep. Yeah, maybe we could go through it also and talk about more on uh, when we present the hierarchy kind of metric uh, yeah, definitely. Um, tree. Okay, uh, so we were asked to go back to this screen, right? Hopefully. Yes, Yeah. I think okay. it's so that people could get some inspiration for the next screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just one, one last thing on this. Um, the natural frequency, usually it's, uh, it's either daily, like the usage interval of natural frequency is usually it's daily, uh, weekly, and monthly. And there's a technique on how to find your usage interval. But, um, you know, just uh, to, to, to not dive deep into this, maybe we could dive into this later. Um, you, you check out like 80% of your user base or that completes that action. And then you understand like, how much time it takes for like 80% of them to go ahead and do that action again. And, and then you could do it in funnels, for example. So then you would see that if you put a time frame of one day, then you have a certain percentage. Oh, three days, you have a certain percentage. That's one way. Another way is looking at it through distribution. So you want to know how many times they're doing something in a specific time frame. And then you also get an idea. But then looking at this through a funnel perspective is that you understand where most of your audience is at. And that's how you get a clearer picture on how they're using it and what natural frequency. So let's, for example, say it comes down to two days, I would go for a daily frequency. If it comes down to like eight days, that's weekly. So you, you round it based on what makes more sense to you and to your business. And you, one way you could see it is when you're looking in a graph, you'd see a lot of movement, movements if your time interval, right, is too narrow. And as you widen that time interval, that curve flattens. And then you see the, the trend, if it's positive, negative. Think about it this way. It's like a zoom in or zoom out on a line graph. That's the usage interval. Um, and when it makes sense to you um, and clear to you, that's basically it. Okay, so going back to this Dropbox example, uh, assuming uh, you guys shared some, uh, some guesses, realize that downloading and accessing a file is basically um, that core value moment for, for, for these users, basically because, um, right, think about what's more important for the user to complete, or how would you uh, have a clear understanding of, is, is a user getting value from that product? So now, again, how often should a typical user be in your product, okay, or, do, or complete that? So, it could be a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually. Does it make sense? I'm guessing, oh, sorry. I'm guessing for a product like Dropbox, it's something that a weekly tendence would, would make more sense. Because it, it's not something you probably would do every day, but you might be doing it like once a week or maybe two times a week. Still not enough for daily. Okay. So let's see how you guys got the concept. If you can go ahead and list the actions that are in your product that create values for the users, okay? And then try to circle one that's important. We'll take a couple of minutes to, to go through this exercise and feel free to share. Yeah, please feel free to share in the chat or raise your hand if you wanna work through an example. 
Uh, we've had one from John Bell around Donate Monthly. Um, John, I don't know if you feel comfortable enough to walk through your example. If so, please feel free to raise your hand and we can unmute you. Hello. I think John should be able to um, yeah, speak now if you're unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Hey, yeah, Hi, we can. Yes. Hi there. We've got uh, our product is to help individuals give to charities that they care about. Um, and we've been doing a lot of thinking about kind of focus metrics. Um, our, we have an app and it allows it's basically kind of a, a set up and forget thing. So one of the, 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 the challenges for us, looking at those other metrics that were kind of suggested, was we're not, it's not an app where people are kind of regularly coming back to and performing some action. They're setting up a donation for a charity that's done regularly and that's done in the background for them. So hence the fact that donations are the most important thing for us um, and probably a monthly time scale is the most suitable. So one thing uh, maybe I didn't mention is you also need to think about uh, what stage you are at the product. So what are you trying to achieve? What's your goal? Are you trying to get more donations? For example, get uh, increase your top of the funnel, get more donators, um, maybe engagement or in this case, retention, users that donate more than once or um, trying to think. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're try, trying to kind of do two things. So yes, so improve uh, our user numbers at the top of the funnel, definitely. And um, we're not as interested in the amount that people are donating, but we are mm -hmm. interested in that kind of ongoing long-term relationship. So kind of retention is really important for us. So it could be that, you know, to close that transaction, maybe we could take like one step back into their transaction, the, to their funnel and understand if maybe they're finding those right organizations to donate to. Maybe we can make this more of kind of like a leading metric and try to understand if they're finding what they need in the platform. You could still go ahead and, and follow on the total number of donations, but imagine if you're able to help them, for example, by, by search or by uh, sharing their interests or, you know, what they're, looking for to donate, maybe you could go ahead and, um, you know, increase that, that right, that, 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 that end of funnel, just by focusing on, I don't know if to call this engagement, but it's more kind of like a discovery in, in regards to your product. Um, that's my thoughts. What do you think about yeah, Harriet? That, that's, that's interesting, because that is the point that we've just arrived at, yes. Mm. Yeah, no, I think that's a great suggestion. Hope that helped, John. Yeah, that was great. Thank you very much. Welcome. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for sharing. Um, yeah, thanks so much. We've also had um, a question come through from Ben as well. Um, ben, I don't know if you feel comfortable as well, if you want to raise your hand, if you do. Yep, great. Um, so yeah, if you unmute, yep, perfect. Hey, Ben. Hello. Um, yeah, so we have different sort of segments. So we have, um, we, we've got an online learning platform. So we have learners, um, provider users that use it and employers. So we have three different segments. And I was just wondering, our, our engagement would be around accessing the system um, as our probably leading metric, but they'd have different frequencies. So would you, would you do something like that as well? So we'd have a learner would be weekly, our, our provider users would be daily and our employers would be monthly. Is that the sort of thing you'd go for having different metrics, uh, different frequencies? Yeah, I, I see Harriet going yes as well. So, <laughs> so yeah, I think it's, yeah. uh, it, it again, it ties back to what are you trying to achieve? What's your goal? Who, who's more important to you? Uh, you could measure all three of them, but if we're talking about a focus metric, then who do you care about most or who makes more significant impact to your business? Um, it could be that it's the three, like for example, marketplace, I'll share another example with one of the companies I founded. So it was a marketplace for uh, finding activities to do nearby. 
And, you know, the first thing is you have to have those activities. If there's nothing to discover, then people won't go ahead and complete the transaction or buy. So like in any marketplace, you need to also prioritize on that. What are you going to do first? You're going to get the buyers or you're going to get the, uh, the sellers in this case, uh, those posts. And, you know, you can find ways to, to, to let's say, hack that. Uh, you don't necessarily need to focus on that segment, but you have to focus on that problem if you assume that's a problem. So what's that problem you're trying to solve? Yeah, that makes sense. So I guess what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure we get the most amount of learner engagement in the platform for their activities you have to do. Um, but our, our providers that use it, the ones that we sell to ultimately, we need to make sure they're engaged enough to instruct the learners as well. So that's why we have our um, provider users being the daily one in some sense. Hmm. But ultimately, okay, leads down to learner engagement. So if I could uh, tie this back to Mixpanel. So Harriet, correct me if like this is a good example. Um, so for example, um, Harriet is a success manager. And usually, maybe I would go ahead and communicate with her. And the team would probably approach me as being the you know, uh, data lead for the company or something like that. Uh, so. So in this case, I would be driving those active users and Harriet would make sure that I have everything that I need in order to do so. And correct me if I'm wrong on this example, but it's <laughs> it, like the reason I, I'm, I'm pointing out this example is because this is what I felt working with Mixpanel. I felt that a lot of the time we need to create that core operation, build that trust, build that network. And, and the way we did it is we ensured that we have, uh, you know, we're using the same tools and that I'm be able to that let's say I'm able to gain knowledge from them. So that, that example back to you is are you providing them with the tools that they would be able to provide what it is you need uh, from their active users? So yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So so think yeah. about, you know, um, how would you measure them, their engagement, those those, you know, um, people in the middle, not the active users. How do you measure their engagement? How do you measure their success? And by measuring their success, it might be a proxy to understanding if their users would be more engaged, yes or no. Now, this is only one example. I'm sure we could find more. All right, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's interesting you tie it back to Mixpanel because one thing I was that resonated with me is we have kind of three different personas in the product. We kind of have um, consumers, learners and teachers so Adan would probably fall into the teacher learner kind of camp but yeah each of them have kind of different um value steps I mean the goal is to get as many teachers as we can but that's not always going to be possible um but what we're going to go through in a bit as well is kind of the broader framework around the um how your kind of other metrics feed into that focus metric and I think some of this could be interesting there as well Great, thank you for that. Great. Okay. Um, just quickly on this as well, we've had one more question, which I think is kind of similar. It's around um, how would you do this process when your product has two main users? So it's a video platform. So you've got people creating content and once you consume it. So would you do this persona, this uh, process twice, one for each persona? Um, so it again ties with uh, at the current stage, what is more important to you? For example, okay, so if you're at a product market fit stage or a growth stage, I'm guessing at product market fit stage, you would want to understand that you have um, a content that is relevant to your target audience. And then you may be, be focused on, uh, I'm actually solving this problem for a company right now, uh, but really trying to understand if um, uh, the engagement that you expect from your end users is tied to the user experience within your platform or you know you need to remember there's a content piece where is it a quality of content length of content relevance of content different forms of metrics that you could uh, measure still um, and maybe you know set your current focus metric on that and once you feel that your uh, you know a goal or a target or like you know um, strategic goal of the company or the product that stage is, is reached, 
you can go ahead and go through this process on the other side of uh, the equation. Hope that answered the question. Great. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for your um, participation. That was great. Okay. So um, how about this slide, this exercise? Do we have any uh, examples? Maybe someone share that we could point out. Yeah, feel free to drop in the chat if you've come up with a value moment and the natural frequency. Um, I can't see anything come through, so maybe we move on to the next yeah, we can section. Always, yep, no problem. Yeah. Okay, so there's also, there was a question about frameworks. How do we do this? How do we find that focus metric? So this is a slide. So you probably heard of Pied Metrics uh, by Dave McClure. Uh, it basically means, and we'll see it in the next slide, it uh, basically means that, you know, the, the product is a different stage and you could see the, the customer lifetime as a funnel. They start from acquisition and you wanna get them to referral. Uh, that's kind of like their life cycle within and there's growth loops and focus metrics. They're pretty similar. The idea is you always want right to focus or you go ahead and you list this different stages and then you try to find metrics for each one of these stages. And then you go ahead and say, okay, where do I want to focus now? Acquisition, activation, retention, let's say. So uh, um, let's say I go ahead and choose top of the funnel as acquisition. Okay, then what metrics would define that? Uh, how could I understand how many people are coming in? Is it app store views, oh, app store, like app downloads, app opens, or is it maybe a little bit more than that? It's maybe finishing onboarding. So it's a little before activation, meaning the user has found his value moment or for example, messaging, sent a message, retention and uh, engagement. It really, it's, 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 it depends how you want to put it, but I usually put uh, also engagement here. So finding different engagement metrics and you'll see it. And also, I think in the next slide uh, to better understand, uh, um, you know, relevant metrics that, 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 that are uh, associated with that proper stage. And then it kind of focuses you on a shorter list that you can then eliminate and prioritize on. Okay. Um, Harriet, you want to go ahead and uh, maybe uh, say, say something about this since I know uh, Mixpanel uses this framework? Yeah, absolutely. So um, this is what we call the Mixpanel measurement framework. Um, and basically you start at the top with your focus metric. So in the case of this example for semi short, um, we've kind of created some example metrics so the focus metric here is a, around weekly active subscribers. One caveat I would say here is you need to define active. So going through that process that we just went through, um, you know, what's the natural frequency and what are the key actions that make someone active in your product? So again, challenging yourself on that. But then below that focus metric, we have what we call tier two um, metrics. So things that contribute to the focus metric. So you can see they fall into kind of different buckets as well. So we've got things around reach, activation. So kind of around that new user engagement and bringing new users into your platform. We then have um, engagement and retention. So making your product sticky and ensuring people are coming back again and again. And we then have the business specific metric as well. So something that might be unique to your business. And so the idea is here, you can plot your, your different metrics in that kind of link up to that focus metric. So I think when we were going through some of the examples before, there were a couple of things that stood out um, or a couple of additional things that maybe you were unsure about, should this be in my focus metric or how do I work with this? And I think maybe having those, some of those as tier two kind of sub metrics to the focus metric that feed in and contribute to that overall kind of product goal that you've got. I don't know if you had anything to, to add to that, Dan, as well. Um, just that doing this example, or working through this uh, exercise, this specific one, one of the feedbacks I have received 
was that, and this is by product managers, for example. So imagine as the organization gets bigger, you're mostly focused on what it is that you're doing. And you're, you don't necessarily have like a bird's eye view of the whole business. And this is kind of what it gives you. It lets you understand sometimes the motivations. So if there's, uh, let's say, partners that you need to sign up for content, then this allows you to understand is, is it good content. And, um, and one of uh, the things you'd want to know is like, do we have good partners? Uh, and good partners means that they, you know, you have to measure them some way and you have to understand also if they're happy partners, like are they getting enough revenue for doing what it is that they're doing to provide us. So it gives you a more holistic uh, view of the product and business. And so even if you won't come uh, with a focus metric for this, it will help you understand priorities. It's more important, it's least important. And it, it's a great tool to start you know, eliminating and take the time to do it. Like, don't, don't rush through this. Um, you know, it's like, if there's one thing uh, you wanna do uh, to, to win, you know, your game is, is, you know, you have to be focused. You have to sharpen that focus. You have to be transparent and share that with the team. So everyone knows what he, we're here for or, or what's a win scenario. And, and this is a way to get a better understanding of that. I think that's a really good point. And um, like we previously said before as well, you know, going through this exercise with different companies, um, you can see where your focus needs to be. So, you know, are we acquiring a lot of new users, but when it comes to kind of their engagement and retention, they're really dropping off or vice versa. Do we have, you know, we're not, growing we're not acquiring as many new users but you know they are really engaged and retained in our product so yeah it really helps you identify where you need to focus as Adam mentioned um Jared has actually um put something in the chat too so Jared I don't know if you feel comfortable to to raise your hand okay so yeah, you should be able to speak now if you come off uh, mute. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, right? perfect. Yeah, yeah so like um, uh, based on the video platform, like we want to um, put a lot of effort into uh, creators because we think that creators are, uh, well, that how our hypothesis is the ones that are going to like drive, uh, like drive us uh, into like a better position. And then like the whole monetization is always uh, around what they create. So we want that we would really want to investigate them and we really want to know how they feel about like monetization and so like different different metrics, let's say. But the basic uh, value that we provide right now is just upload a video. Like they upload different videos and then basically we monetize them and then we pay them back. Uh, so upload a video might be uh, the metric that we want to focus because we want to focus more on the, um, the, the creator side rather than the consumer side, let's say. But uh, in this case, uploading more is uh, like, two, per, like two, two videos per week to 10 videos per week is not always um, good, you know? Like, I mean, like that's the tricky part. Like the tricky thing is that um, how do you then evaluate this metric? Because like not always quantity is better than quality in this case, if that makes any sense. Yes, yeah. It's a good question because it's a good problem that I think a lot of people are, are it's always like quality or quantity, uh, what's more, most important. Um, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, we, it's an, yeah, Harry, you we have, have anything this, about that? Yeah, we have this uh, question quite a lot with media companies as well around, you know, the amount of videos viewed versus the length of time. So some people have a KPI around if they watch more than 10 minutes or, you know, what, what is the actual length of the content that they're, they're viewing? Um, perhaps something around, so once the content's been uploaded, the engagement with that um, content, I don't know what you think, Adam. Um, I wanted to ask a, a question back and it's, is the engagement only download or is there some sort of other consumption Did we lose him? Is he still 
I think. No, I was, uh, yeah, I was muted. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, is uh, like the videos cannot be downloaded. It's just like, um, like think about this as if it was YouTube, more or less. Okay. Yeah, so I think so. What Harriet said is <clears throat> really, uh, you know, reflects that challenge. And I think that, like for me, I like to look at distributions here uh, because distributions will tell you how, you know, how frequent someone would do an action. Um, um, and get an understanding of what the, your whole user base and how many users are behaving in a specific way. So you could do that on one end, and then you could understand your content creators and try to understand, you know, that top percentage, you know, how many videos are they putting in? Um, so for example, okay, so it's, let's say, like 1% of your whole user base are those content creators. That's usually is like one to 5%. Um, that's for the marketplace, for example. For me, it was like uh, um, event creations or activity creations. So, so again, it was like, you know, how do I measure like uh, the amount of, you know, uh, activities they do or the number of activities that there's engagement on. So again, the content that they share, how do you measure how valuable it is? And this is something that you need to understand your audience a little bit better to understand how that content is consumed. In, could it be views, length of views? Um, could it be comments or likes or any other type of engagement? Shares could be one thing. But then you could do, uh, you could have a metric that says um, the number of creators that have uh, at least 10 content shares or 10 likes or 10. It's a bit complex maybe. And maybe you can simplify and get to a better one. But you know, out of my head right now, I'm thinking about something that uh, includes user engagement and content creation. So then you get kind yeah, of like I a product think. health metric. Okay, so it's more like the density of each piece of content. But in this case, for instance, it's also like you, uh, in order to focus on, like the funny thing is that in order to focus on the content creators, you need to just actually go to see the metrics in the user base to when you really wanna focus on the other side. I, I, I'm the, also the guy who asked about these two different personas. Uh, if we want to just focus, do would like this process for both um, personas or just do, doing it for one? And then the answer was just, just doing it for the one that you want to focus. And I think yeah. it's actually a really good answer. But now it's focusing on one, but then just going back to the other side again, right? More or less? Not really, because you don't care who is consuming the content. You just care that the content is being consumed. So you're okay. checking the creators on how uh, valuable they are to your users. So it kind of covers both ends, but you're focusing on measuring the number of creators that are valuable, that eventually just, you know, you know, one idea, right? But if you have these good creators, you want to incentivize them and get more creators to be like that. That would tell you maybe how you could go ahead and incentivize or how much it's valuable for you, how much to pay for them to be continuing to doing that, uh, you know, that, that good, let's say that those good actions within the app, within the product, sorry. Yeah, maybe this falls into, on your stage. Sorry. sorry. Sorry, yeah, so yeah, that's it. Maybe this falls into the engage, engagement as well. So those tier two metrics, so around, um, you know, the number of uploads versus um, the content engagement metric that Adan came up with, which I think could be quite interesting. All right. Thank you. And you could also play around with it. So even if you feel that that's not the one, you could, before you go ahead and set it as a focus metric, look back at the data, see if it makes sense. See what happens when, when you have a lot of those or when you have, you know, a short number, uh, like a smaller number of those and see what it means on your overall business. And, you know, monitoring this through time will give you a better picture of your, if you're right or wrong. And don't worry to be wrong. It's, it's a work in progress. So even if you've selected something that does not fit your goal, and we'll, we, we'll go into this topic soon, you could go ahead and, and iterate. Uh, if you're a smaller company, it's easier. If it's a bigger company, it might be a little tougher, but everyone needs to keep in mind this is a work in progress and it needs to fit the, com the goal of the company. If you pick a metric that does not serve that goal, it should be changed. That part is rather intuitive. All right. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Thank you for being engaged. Thanks for sharing, Jared. All right. So 
the next one is, is is similar but for mixed panel and harry if you want to go ahead and take this through yeah so um this is the actual mixed panel measurement framework so this is our focus metric that we've defined um so this is kind of more an example of a b2b business as well which is something we get asked quite a lot so our focus metric revolves around weekly answering users so the number of users who answered a question in the past seven days so we've tied the, the time element to that. So for us, it's weekly. And then you can see as well that we've got, um, you know, our different metrics below that as well around reach, activation, engagement, retention, and business specific as well there. Um, I won't go into it in too much detail because I know we're running out of time. So um, yeah, but you can see some examples there. Okay. So creating buy-in. Right. This is a part where if you're a smaller company, it may be easier, but it could be two founders that are just debating, you know, is it this or that? Okay. So first of all, if you are one founder that wants to be focused on a specific metric, you know, you, you want to share the reasoning and you want to get the team involved, even engineers or QA or designers, just so you could have a different, uh, different perspectives of looking at it. Sometimes you choose a metric that is focused to your area. And maybe you know looking at this from a holistic approach could help you iterate on that even before you measure it and find something that is better for me as doing this in a big company like uh, viber you really had to go ahead and roadshow these metrics so this means like i met with like 10 teams and i met with the team leads and i met with the the, the analysts for example and uh and uh product marketing and just reiterated on um on, on why I believe that a specific metric should be the focus metric and not what we're following or something like that. And I really created workshops. So I've created all the material and I pushed this through through all the teams and try to find, you know, how to, mo you know, motivate them to get engaged and, 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 you know, get them to understand why this is such a critical issue. You see, it's like, imagine, well, you probably know this, but at your first stages as an early company, you go ahead and you build an MVP or you build some sort of uh, proof of concept. But as you start getting feedback in, um, then the products change, but you need to remain objective. And this is the, the you know, to build a good product, you need to re remain objective to, to uh, are you solving the problem or are you serving the value for your users? And again, at this point, if you're also doing this with big companies, the further you are in, the more chances that you just wandered off someplace different that doesn't serve your goal and that doesn't drive growth. So being objective and always asking these questions and being transparent uh, and getting people involved is really gonna help you focus on, uh, on what's the right thing to focus. And that, that's what gets your buy-in. It's uh, getting people engaged in the process and not necessarily just giving them the solution. Okay, so um, this basically sums it up. So you could start small, as we said, answering the questions. And um, uh, you could use a framework that's called SMART goals. So every uh, metric that you choose needs to be uh, um, um, uh, specific, okay? Measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. This is the part where we started off. Um, so once the focus is set, how do you forecast the goal? Imagine that is super, super challenging because you're really looking into the future and you're saying, I believe that in X time from now, like quarter, year, it's going to be that X number. So first of all, don't worry about that. And I'm going to start with the second point, guess and constantly measure. But if you want to be more precise and you want to feel more confident sharing that number and with yourself, um, then you could always benchmark this based on competition. So one of the things that I did is for, for uh, Viber is I looked at the competition and I understood uh, what's their trend in the markets where they are strong. If I'm trying to uh, generate growth for my product, then it's good to look at people that are in your same industry and that are growing. So how are they going in active users and downloads and you know how are they behaving? And then I take a similar metric, understand how I'm behaving, look at markets that are strong, let's say uh, just about like fighting for market share and maybe low market share and, and try to set, you know, estimates for, um, for, you know, if I want to be in that market, I need to be at like 5% more. So what does 5% mean for my metric? And then just set that goal. Um, that's the first thing. And you have app reviews and also there's tons of, um, of publicly available data. 
uh, there was one uh, which I shared, um, which is called We Are Social. They have uh, digital uh, you know, digital trends that they send um, like once every half a year, which are include like 300 pages. Super, super amazing. It's for every country. Uh, you understand how many mobile downloads, how many social media users, what's the demographics, different trends, time spent, tons of metrics that are super relevant if you want to go ahead and learn about your industry. And I'd recommend you look that up. Yep. Actually, Harry, anything? Um, we've had someone raise their hand, Samuel. Um, I'm just going to allow you to speak. Um, so yeah, feel free to, to ask your question. You should be able to unmute yourself now. Maybe it was an accident. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, no, the only thing I would add to this is, you know, you can benchmark against yourself as well. So, um, yeah, just always constantly iterating and improving a bit like Adam said too. Yeah, and if you're wrong, again, don't worry about it. Uh, you could underestimate or overestimate. And the purpose of this is to iterate and make sure you're right or closer the next time. Um, okay, so... You know, as a business grows, we talked into this a little bit. Um, can you change your focus metrics? And basically it's very, very simple. What's the goal? Does it the metric define the goal? Does it help the goal? If it's true, then still stay patient. It takes time to generate growth, to understand your target audience, to go ahead and do those implementations and iterations to your product, to really be able to see the numbers. For some products, it could be immediate. For some products, it might take some time. But if you still feel that it doesn't, then go ahead and pivot the metric. And as, again, if it's a smaller company, it's going to be easier. If it's a bigger company, it might take you a little more time. But again, if you keep everyone engaged and you have the buy-in, it shouldn't be an, uh, an issue. And the organization can have several focus metrics. So basically, the answer is yes. And uh, remember, we talked about the different teams, different standpoints. So sales could have one specific goal, which is to get more people to consume the product or not so necessarily to buy the product, not consume. And for product, it would be really to use the product and discover those value moments and to engage. So they all could have their different metrics. But from a product or company or mission standpoint, the metric should serve that mission or that goal that currently stands for the company. And so it has to align. And if we're going back to the, the tree that Harriet showed, this really talks about that. Everything could propagate up up on that uh, table. Um, so like whoever's pushing the, that focus metric, you just need to ensure that they understand the reasoning behind it. So, and, and that they get an incentivized if necessary for that you know, top metric, that focus metric, and not necessarily that local metric that they're optimizing. Okay, so this is kind of like uh, the cherry on top of understanding what is possible once you have this. But before that, um, do we have anything, uh, maybe any question or anything that we want to maybe raise or uh, put into before we go into this? We could also do the Q&A later. We haven't had anything come through, but yeah, feel free to send questions through because we will be going through into Q&A in a minute too. Okay, so we put in a ton of metrics. We talked a little about different companies and you realize that some metrics are more important than others. But once you have that focus metric, um, I want to share with you something that I did at Fiber that I, I believe that uh, could really drive impact uh, when you're looking at your product from a global perspective. Right? There, there's participants from all over the, the world here. And you know, if there's one thing that I want to share with you is, or I want, would ask you kind of like to think about taking from this work session is to not necessarily think about UX and features and code written first. Right? It's to ask those harsh, hard questions of uh, what is a win scenario? How, is it, uh, how should it be defined? How could I measure it? Before you write the code, before you go ahead and run to build that product. And I know, uh, you know as founders and startups, you're always in running mode because you're always you know, in, the, in a place where you don't have time and you don't have money and you're trying to iterate fast and trying to get feedback fast and you're trying to go through that loop. But in order to run to the right place, you need to go ahead and understand from the first steps, 
where you want to go. And after doing this, you could go ahead and then also uh, build your data ecosystem and maybe analyze your data. And this is basically what I want to show you now. Imagine Viber is a company that operates in so many countries, right? Imagine how you could go ahead and, and take a global company with so many uh, segments and so such a vast user base and you know, derive insights from all this. So I built something that's called the global opportunity model. Okay, and, and this is kind of the, the way I'm, I'm, I thought about approaching this is to combine that focus metric into user behavior data. Okay, and for example, if I, I just wanna recap on that, that focus metric that I took was users that are active seven days out of seven days a week. So imagine you could take that and then break it down to users that are active three times a week and five plus times a week and you know different buckets. And your goal eventually would be to shift users from like the first bucket to the second bucket until you get to that focus metric. So it's kind of like breaking down your focus metric. Now let's break it down to the first part. So the first part would be like taking kind of like, uh, let's say there are two ends. There's a focus metric and then there's the beginning, like those users that are just at the beginning of, 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 uh, of adopting your product. So I call these users adopters and these power users. Now the adopters would be active like one day out of a week. So imagine I have seven days and then I have one day. Okay, now if they're active one day, is that good for my um, natural frequency for the app and for the usage or pattern that I'm, I expect? And the answer is it depends, right? If I'm at a place where I have um, low market share, there'd be one type of behavior and expected behavior at least. And then if I have high market share and then it's different. So I took the market dynamics, which means like market share and, um, and uh, I would say market growth. So to the growth would tell me the momentum, if it's positive or negative, and if it's big or small and the market share, I could break that down into segments. And once you combine that along with the focus metric and the, the user behavior, then you could go ahead and, and look at your data completely different. In this case, imagine it was like, like you know, more than 100 countries and more than you know, so many uh, uh, user segments, which I was able to focus only on nine models. Just to give you an example, one of the insights was we were able to locate around um, you know, millions of users just in like one country that they used the app and we had like pretty nice market share there. So just to, so you would understand. So that would mean like a high percentage of users are active one day out of a week. Okay, in a place where you have high market share is sort of like a red light because if users are using this only once and we said that the focus metric, uh, based on focus metric that we're looking at users that are using this seven times and market share and market dynamics have strong impact on that. So this is kind of like not the behavior I'm expecting. So when you look at that data, you find millions of users that are using it one day, but 25 times that day and then not zero the rest of the week. So that brings you to those users and you, you go ahead and ask the, you know, better questions. It's like, is this uh, a value gap? Is there something that they're missing that maybe we can address? Or maybe that's their natural frequency and that's completely fine. But doing so, you're able to create a product roadmap that you can iterate, measure and learn from. Um, and, and that's basically right the whole power of looking at the right stuff and uh, being able to derive uh, insights from there. Okay, so if there are right. any more questions on this uh, part, then we can jump into the Q&A. Yeah, please feel free to send your questions through. And um, we've also shared a survey in the um, chat. So if you wouldn't mind giving us some feedback as to how you found today's session, that would be great. Um, Jared's asking if you've got Twitter. Uh, I do, uh, less active, but you can, you can go ahead and shoot, shoot me an email and we can connect there. And maybe I'll be more active on Twitter. <laughs> uh, you can also shoot me on LinkedIn. You can find me on LinkedIn. On, uh, uh, it's, uh, you should find me like Idanda Dadon. I think there's also a link that's going to be shared in the recording that has... Uh, um, a link to my LinkedIn page. 
And then yeah, please feel free to you know reach out if uh, you know you need any additional help. If you have any questions, uh, you don't necessarily have to feel that this is only the place to do it. Um, you know, be glad to help, glad to learn, and uh, yeah, we have a mixed else. panel uh, community as well. So you know, feel free to sign up to that, um, and we'll also send out the recording link and the framework we went through and a couple of other resources around focus metrics. Great, well, yeah, feel free to send any questions through. We'll give it another minute just in case. Oh, we've got a question. Um, Julia, so sorry, Julia, we actually, um, we didn't get to this question at the start, which was around, um, in which game would you put products that make work more secure? Um, interesting. Let me go back to that slide just so we have, uh, you know, we have that clear. But uh, um, let me see. I'm sorry. One sec. Okay. So. How did uh, she rephrase it again, Harriet? Could you read that out for me again? The product's more secure. In which game would you put products that make work more secure? Okay, so work more secure. I think that work is a productivity thing. So in work, it means that you're putting, ta you're making tasks. So if people feel more secure, they would expectedly uh, use it more. And by using it more, it could mean, um, I don't know what exactly you do in terms of work, but I think you could you could look through um, a number of times they you know open the platform uh, in a specific time frame. That would tell you how they feel secure, right? Because they wouldn't if they wouldn't feel secure, they won't come back. So it's kind of like retention metrics. Um, yeah. So Julia's actually raised her hand. So um, Julia should be able to speak now if you're on mute. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, perfect. Oh, thanks. Uh, I wanted to be a bit more specific about our product. Um, so we are in the uh, IT security and uh, our goal is to um, make the make the product or make uh, the work of our users more secure. So we are learning them to uh, don't click on phishing emails, for example, and be more safe when working so uh, that the company won't have any issues in that area. So it's not really that they are more productive, but it's a more sort of a pre uh, prevention. Yeah, like to me, this the first thing that came up when you said that is uh, kind of want to measure churn uh, and like getting a proxy for churn. And so, so Usually you probably see someone right buy in the product because they uh, you were able to convince them that you give them value, but then how do you measure the value? Uh, I try to understand maybe better about uh, who your users are. Uh, if it's like a email fraud or something like that, then I would try to understand um, what would they do before they churn. Uh, and then, uh, cause since you can't necessarily measure churn, you can measure the users that were active and that are less active or users that enjoyed your product, meaning that um, let's say it's emails coming in and you've been able to spot a lot of fraud. So kind of going through like false positive, false negatives and uh, trying to figure out what proxy would tell you if they got a good experience. But in terms of games, um, like to me, it still feels a little bit more of like a productivity. Uh, what do you think, Harriet? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's like productivity or time spent. I'm not sure. Um, by the way, it could be a mix, but it, it, it's always you want to go ahead and focus on one thing more than the other, just because it helps you be a lot more focused on it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Julia. Um, great. Well, I think, I think that's it. Uh, we haven't had any other questions come through. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for your time, Adan, and thank you everyone for joining. And yeah, as we mentioned, feel free to follow up in the different channels. Thank you guys. It's been a pleasure. Great. Bye, everyone. Bye bye.